Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Govberg, and thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at the Grand Seiko Historical Collection SBGA 127 Limited Edition. You can see this Grand Seiko on our website, govbergwatches.com. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our app, Govberg On Time, for the latest news, views, reviews, and multimedia of luxury watches. Now, this is a 2015 limited edition of 700, designed to pay tribute to the original 1967 first of the line automatic Grand Seiko watch. That was the 62GS. This one, the SBGA 127, features quite a few tricks in its own right, being of the spring drive series, Seiko's highest level of technology in one of its most traditional and elegantly rendered cases. Now on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, the profile of this 127 is classical. It's also quite discreet, being nice and slim. The model itself is only 12.8 millimeters thick and with a generously sloped case flank and a domed sapphire, it's very easy for a dress cuff or sleeve to slide up and over this watch. Now it is 40 millimeters across the round of the case, so the size is a perfect match between modernity and traditionalism. It's also 50.5 millimeters from the outermost horn of the solid end link of the bracelet to the opposite side. When dealing with modern solid end link bracelets, it's best to measure from the outcropping of solid end links rather than lug to lug. It gives you a truer standard for judging the fit of the watch. So it has broad shoulders, but not excessive. Now this is a titanium reference, so it's very light on the wrist. Everything, case, bezel, bracelet and clasp is beautifully finished and Seiko does a great job of using contrast as a sort of jewelry effect on this bracelet, clasp and case. Now the intermediate links are polished for high contrast whereas the flanking links and the center links are beautifully brushed with a satin finish. There's a little bit of a polished bevel across the shoulders of the outer links. Again, beautiful to set off the metal itself. Seiko does a great job of using the titanium to create a jewel-like effect. No need to resort to precious metals or two-tones. The faceting, the alternating polish and satinated portions are gorgeous. And it continues on the dial itself. Now here we see a beautiful, rich, lustrous blue, and it actually steps down from that tall, vintage-inspired domed-style sapphire to the beautiful, lustrous blue dial itself via a flange. This Rayhot like flange outboard of the hour track serves as a scale for the minutes and the seconds and provides a nice visual transition down to the dial. The dial is of exceptional quality. Now all elements are applied and quite beautifully. They're polished and faceted for a little bit of a dazzling effect. Seiko does a great job of integrating the power reserve discreetly, just a little bit of traditional off-centered calculated asymmetry to make the dial intriguing, but it is lightly balanced off-center by the date window at 3 o'clock, which features a beautiful polished frame. Now the hands at center are an interesting take on Dauphine. They're satinated across their tops, but they are faceted and polished along their edges, so they catch light in interesting ways that really animate the dial. The best way to describe the dial is a sort of lustrous cobalt blue. It does change in direct light. The soft light of the light box really doesn't flatter it. When it's in direct sunlight, it explodes, and then it almost looks like lacquer or enamel. It has a look that it's almost wet, that it's deep, and it's beautiful. Now, the Seiko script at 12 o'clock is applied, as is the Grand Seiko GS logo at 6 o'clock. So everything on this dial is finished to the highest standard and applied by hand. Now, the case back for many devotees of Seiko will be the main event. This is the spring drive movement, one of the great innovations in modern watchmaking. It's neither entirely mechanical nor entirely quartz. What it is is the 9R65 caliber with a 72-hour power reserve, automatic winding. It does feature the cardinal refinements such as hacking seconds, which I'll demonstrate by unscrewing the screw down crown. I should mention the watch does have 100 meter water resistance with a screw down crown, so quite versatile from a sporting perspective, but it features hacking seconds and it also features a quick set function for the date itself. So you can quickly cycle the date should the watch run down. But the real highlight of this movement isn't so much the basic functions or even the exceptional three-day power reserve, but just how it keeps time. Now, it does feature a quartz oscillator, but it's not powered by solar energy. It's not powered by a battery. It is quite literally what the name implies, a spring drive. A spring drives the regulating wheel, which can be seen 
just below my finger, in constant motion. Now an induced current effectively provides feedback to the regulating circuit so that the wheel spins neither too quickly nor too slowly. The result is that this regulating organ, powered entirely by stored mechanical energy in the spring, achieves better than mechanical chronometer timing standards, really a great deal closer to a good quartz watch. Deviation even of a chronometer grade wristwatch can amount to minutes per month. In the case of the spring drive caliber 9R65, deviation is rated as plus or minus 15 seconds per month. This is an exceptional feat of engineering, but it's also a beautiful and versatile reference. Handsome enough to be a dress watch, tough enough with 100 meter water resistance to be a sports watch, and in titanium, light enough to enjoy on any wrist with a beautiful twin trigger single deployant clasp and a gorgeous alternately brushed and polished bracelet this watch can be considered the total package you can see it on our website govbergwatches.com